Hello everyone, uh, this is Mohit. So today we'll be discussing about Hadoop on Google Cloud Platform. So in this uh, video, we'll discuss how we can leverage Google Cloud Platform to run our Hadoop jobs. So uh, the agenda for today's uh, session is uh, we'll discuss uh, about the context, like why we need Hadoop on the Google Cloud Platform and uh, how we can uh, use it. Uh, what is the service uh, which actually uh, help us to use uh, Hadoop on the Google Cloud Platform? So we'll discuss a service called Dataproc in brief to see how we can use Dataproc to run uh, Hadoop on the uh, GCP. Uh, the, then we'll discuss how we can migrate the on-premise Hadoop infrastructure to the Google Cloud. So we'll discuss a few things like uh, an ephemeral model. Uh, we'll discuss how we can design a hybrid solution. And then we, we'll discuss how to define a, design a cloud native solution uh, for the uh, Hadoop Infra. So let's uh, have some context. Uh, why do we want to use uh, Hadoop in the uh, Google Cloud Platform? So the first thing is we, uh, since we are in the on-premise setup and uh, we want to migrate it on the Google Cloud Platform as a part of the migration process, uh, then the thing is uh, we first need to see the compatibility of how the Google Cloud Platform uh, works when it comes to Hadoop. So GCP provides uh, inbuilt support for the Hadoop Platform. Uh, there is a service called as Dataproc. It is a managed Hadoop and Spark environment. So uh, it will be uh, looking similar to what we have in uh, on the on-premise setup. Let's say if we are using a cloud era uh, as a setup, then we'll see how cloud era can uh, how cloud era setup of Hadoop can be replaced with uh, Google Cloud Platform using Dataproc. So uh, the second thing is it manage it provides the managed hardware and configuration. So, in when we when it comes about the on-premise setup, it's the uh, admin that manages the uh, on-premise environment. Uh, instead of that, uh, GCP uh, help us to uh, focus only on the uh, data and our uh, jobs instead of uh, worrying about the hardware and other configurations. So uh, that is what it helps. Uh, to just focus on the uh, job and uh, we don't have to manage the cluster as such as it is uh, provided by uh, GCP. The third one is the uh, simplified version management. Uh, simplified version management basically uh, help us to uh, migrate from on-premise to uh, GCP uh, data proc. Uh, basically, uh, let's say if you are using a Spark 2.6 in your uh, on-premise uh, environment and uh, now you want to move to uh, uh, on on the uh, data proc so data proc will provide that specific version of spark uh, it's uh, it all it will also ask you if you want to uh, move to an uh, higher or lower version let's say uh, currently we are running on spark 3 and i want to use a spark 3.3 then uh, it will help you to uh, select that uh, version and you can run your job there the last one that uh, uh, that is the flexible job configuration. So instead of having one monolithic cluster uh, that we currently see in the on-premise setup that we only have one cluster for say 10 nodes with 100 GB RAM on each clusters. Uh, instead of that, you can use a flexible job configuration where you can uh, have multiple clusters in place. Even you can have a cluster for your one job as well. And you can uh, start and stop your cluster. You can auto scale your cluster uh, based on a job configuration. So this help uh, and uh, this help us to have multiple clusters based on our requirement, uh, run your job and then uh, delete the cluster when it is not required. It, all in all, it will help us to uh, reduce cost as well since the job will run when, uh, when it is required. So uh, let's discuss in brief about Dataproc. So Dataproc is a managed Spark and Hadoop service. Uh, 
Uh, it helps us to leverage the open source data tool for batch processing, uh, pairing, streaming, and machine learning, all of them. Now, data prop automation help us to create the cluster quickly and manage them easily and save some money when, by turning the cluster off when there's no job running. So uh, in data prop automation, let's say I have a Spark job, uh, which uh, calculate the daily sales and uh, um, profit margins and say revenue that, that is being generated. So data proc automation will help us uh, that for this particular job, you can create a cluster using a configuration. Uh, you can run them. Uh, once the job is completed, uh, this cluster will shut down. Hence, let's say if you have a, your job took 10 minutes to complete only, uh, you will be charged for those 10 minutes instead of an hour or so. Uh, then uh, we have to spend much less lesser time and money on admin and we can focus more on the job and data. So you don't have to worry about the cluster. You just have to specify, okay, I want to use this particular uh, version of uh, data proc and uh, we want to use two master nodes and six data nodes, something of that sort. You just have to define in the configuration and once you submit the job, everything will be in place for you. Uh, data proc has an advantage that it has a built-in integration for other GCP services. Uh, let's say I want to uh, use BigQuery, I want to use Bigtable, I want to use logging and monitoring to see how my job goes. Uh, if there is some failure, we can just go to the cloud logging and we can see. Uh, what was the reason for that job uh, that got failed? Uh, also, if you want to have a data warehouse uh, over GCP, you can use a BigQuery. So your Spark job can directly dump in the data to the BigQuery and uh, BigQuery can be used as a data warehouse. GCS, Google Cloud Storage can be used as a data lake. And then uh, there's a big table as well. Uh, if for your NoSQL use cases, uh, you can use big table for the same. Uh, one advantage is that uh, data proc cost is really low. It costs only one cent per virtual CPU per hour. Then, uh, as I mentioned, that it only charges for the seconds that you have used uh, with a minimum one minute billing period. So, say you started your cluster, then only for the first minute you will be charged. And after the first minute, only per second you will be charged. So, say if my cluster was uh, uh, active for one minute, 30 seconds, you will be charged for one minute, 30 seconds. And if your cluster was active for 30 seconds, then it will charge you for a minimum of one minute. So one minute minimum is something that is, uh, that you are going to be charged as, as soon as you, uh, the cluster is active for the job. Uh, then, uh, you can, uh, start scale and shut down your cluster and also the operation, uh, that, uh, like if you want to start a cluster, it won't take more than 90 seconds, uh, like they have mentioned, but uh, sometime it takes uh, say 100 to 120 seconds, but not more than that. So within two minutes, you will have your cluster set up done and your job will get executed there. And once it is done, even the uh, shutting down of the cluster also not take much time. So uh, generally uh, within 60 seconds, I have seen the cluster get shut down. Now, once you create a data proc cluster, it will look something like this. Uh, we'll see uh, in detail when we will have a proper uh, lab session for data proc. Uh, but once you have created the uh, cluster, it will tell you like how many worker nodes you have selected, what, how many preemptible worker nodes. Preemptible worker nodes are uh, uh, the uh, uh, less expensive node, I would say, uh, but uh, which comes with a caveat that we'll discuss later. Uh, it will tell you about where your where your cluster is set up. What is the zone? Uh, what how many master nodes? What is the disk size? Uh, what is the machine type? Like N one standard one, which provides one CPU and three GB memory. Uh, it can it can be uh, it can be uh, a high memory type of a machine. Uh, like uh, say if I have a memory intensive job, uh, 
which requires a lot of memory per node then you can use a high memory uh, type high memory machine type on the other hand if uh, i don't care much about memory but i want to uh, run my job in parallel you can use a lower memory and high cpu uh, node so it will have more cpu goals uh, but the lesser memory now if i want to migrate from on premise hadoop uh, servers on premise hadoop infrastructure to google cloud we uh, we we have to think about uh, three four thing like uh, it won't be as straightforward it can be uh, but it is not recommended so say if i want to have everything uh, like how my on premise uh, cluster is i want to have a lift and shift kind of a thing like whatever tools we were using on premise how you were storing your data in on premise how do you how you were processing your data on premise if you want to uh, go ahead with that well and good like uh, data prog will provide you everything but uh, instead of that uh, when it comes to google cloud and if you want to save your money and you want to save your uh, time you can have a shift in approach like instead of having one cluster one monolithic cluster of uh, uh, one big cluster you can have a cluster for each job or a set of jobs so say i want to move my data from uh, the input layer to the uh, say integrated layer or into the refined layer. So uh, you can have a, dip, a these are the dependent job. Like I have one table uh, where we are going to read the data. Uh, we are going to uh, store the data at the very first uh, instance, uh, which will be a source. So that will be my first, uh, first job. Uh, after once the job is, uh, once we have uh, the data in the raw location, uh, we might want to have a refined uh, uh, data, refined data where we have to apply some filter on the source data. We have to say organize my data in a particular way. I want to compress my uh, data into a parquet format. So these two are dependent jobs. So uh, reading the data and populating my raw raw layer. Raw layer basically means where you have as is copy of the source data. And then we have the refined layer where we will be having a copy of data, um, which is more refined, filtered, and compressed. So these two can be uh, th these two jobs can be uh, executed in one cluster. And then there would be some independent job, which can be uh, executed in a separate cluster. Uh, now, so that is the shift of approach. We'll discuss that more in detail in uh, some time. Uh, then you you have to use a Google Cloud Storage instead of SDFS to process the data. So since SDFS is an expensive, uh, uh, like running SDFS on data prop to store the data, it would be uh, more expensive than using a Google Cloud Storage. So it is recommended that uh, when you move from on-premise to uh, GCP, uh, you use a Google Cloud Storage uh, for uh, for your data lake. Similarly, if you are in AWS, use S3 instead of using the EMR uh, provided SDFS. Now with uh, less time and money on uh, spent or administration, we have a uh, more focus on job and data like we have earlier uh, discussed. So basically you have your data stored in one place, you have compute in other place, and you just have to focus on the data and job instead of uh, thinking about your uh, clusters, like how to manage your cluster that is taken care by GCP. Uh, it is also recommended that you can use uh, more GCP products instead of uh, using the open source tools. So you can have your uh, data pro cluster and use the bare minimum of that cluster. Uh, for other purpose, you can use uh, GCP offerings. So say if I want to use uh, database uh, like a hive instead of that you can use a big query uh, if you want to log your data instead of you logging it inside the data block cluster you use a cloud and monitoring provided by uh, gcp it will be easy to manage as well as it will be uh, much uh, i would say uh, cheaper than uh, than the uh, data uh, then you uh, set up everything in data proc 
so uh, we talked about uh, you instead of having one cluster you can have multiple cluster uh, so this particular thing can be done uh, with the help of an ephemeral model uh, what ephemeral model says that uh, for a job, you create a cluster, you run your job, and then you, once the job is completed, you stop your cluster. So if you go via this model, uh, you don't have to stop. Uh, there would be a workflow uh, which will uh, which will start the cluster, it will uh, execute your job, and it will stop your cluster. So with this model, it helps you save a lot of money because you are just going to pay for the time when your job was active, once the job was uh, deleted or once the job was completed, it may be success, it may be failed. Your cluster will shut down and you have don't have to uh, you don't don't have to pay for uh, for a particular uh, you don't have to pay for a whole day or something like that. You just have to pay for the hours that you have used. Also uh, minutes for that matter. Also uh, there may be cases where uh, you have a more complex job which will require say uh, hundreds of GB of data, uh, memory. Uh, you can have the job uh, for that purpose. Also, you can uh, have a smaller job which uh, which will get executed in 10 minutes, uh, which require a few GB of data set. You can have that as well. So you, you can tailor your cluster accordingly based on the uh, job requirement. So this is the ephemeral model. Uh, like we have discussed about separating data from computation. Uh, if we don't use SDFS as a persistent storage, uh, we can uh, use the ephemeral model. If you want to use SDFS as a persistent storage, then you can't use the ephemeral model that because you have to uh, keep your uh, cluster running forever. Uh, this comes with the cost implications as well. Also, if you have GCS instead of SDFS, uh, the access permissions are easier to manage since GCS uh, uh, can leverage the identity and access management. You can have different roles for different users, like if there's a PII data, you can tag that and you can uh, provide uh, selective access. So not everyone have access to all the data. Uh, managing that thing is easier in the GCS instead of SDFS. It requires less maintenance from a user perspective. Uh, like I don't have to interfere much. I ask GCP to manage it for, for us. Uh, it also gets integrated with other GCP services. I You can integrate GCS, Google Cloud Storage with BigQuery as well. You can uh, leverage other services uh, there as well. Uh, it is less expensive, expensive uh, than SDFS, obviously, uh, because you don't have to manage the uh, persistent cluster. Uh, you have to, uh, you don't have to run your data pro cluster forever. You just have to run when your job when your job is required uh, to execute. Uh, but since we are not maintaining the data in SDFS, you're, you're, you can uh, any anytime shut down your cluster since all your data is in GCS. So these are the, these are the advantages, uh, like if you separate the data from computation. Now, uh, let's see what are the different ways to migrate the data from on-premise to Google Cloud. So here you see two uh, two images. Uh, one is the on-premise cluster, and the other one is the G GCP. So in the on-premise cluster, you see there are four jobs running in one, cluster one. Okay, but when you move to GCP, uh, you use the data proc service. You can see that only dependent job, like I've discussed, that the job that takes the data from source and move it to the raw layer in GCS and then from raw to refine. Since these are dependent job, I can club them together and it can be executed in one cluster. Job three and job four, since they are independent from each other as well as from job one and job two, we can uh, schedule them in a different cluster. Storage, if you see in cluster one, we have the storage as SDFS. Uh, but in the uh, GCP, uh, you have the Google Cloud Storage. You can have multiple bucket. You can have one bucket. It's uh, up to us. Like, how do you, we want to organize our data set uh, based on uh, different uh, scenarios? Like, if your data has PII information, or then you might want to have separate buckets, and you can manage bucket level access, something of that sort. So, this is how it looks like. 
uh, we can have a hybrid solution. Uh, let's say uh, if I work in a bank and since bank has more sensitive data than anyone else, they don't want to move everything to uh, Google Cloud. Even though Google Cloud has uh, uh, like, you know, uh, security features that is required, but there may be case that I don't want to move uh, all my all of my data to GCP. I just want to move some of the data to GCP and I want to maintain most of the data which is sensitive to me to the on-premise cluster. So for that purpose, we can uh, use a hybrid solution. I want to, I'll keep uh, sensitive data on-premise and uh, whatever data is not sensitive, I can move it to Google Cloud. And uh, there may be other cases, like there's some requirement that wants the data to be in on-premise. So in the in those cases, some of the data will stay on-premise and other will move to the cloud. Uh, there may be the case, like uh, we are running uh, some other system as well, and that system uh, is not, uh, we cannot connect that system to the uh, Google Cloud since there is uh, some technical challenges, there's some technical challenges. Uh, then in that case also, the data used by other system, we have to keep on premise. Now to maintain the hybrid solution, we would require an on-premise cluster forever since uh, uh, some of the work will be done on-premise. Uh, we also have to maintain the Google Cloud clusters, uh, data sets, uh, since we uh, we want to have some of the data move to GCP and we want to process that data in GCP. So you have to maintain the storage on GCP. Uh, you have to maintain the storage on on-premise as well. And we have to create a connection between on-premise to Google Cloud uh, so that when whenever you want to move the data to GCP, you can uh, have a connection in place and that connection will help you to uh, move the data from on-premise to GCP. Uh, designing a hybrid solution, uh, we would require a VPN. Uh, if you see over here, VPN is basically a gateway to connect your on-premise to the GCP. Uh, GCP clusters, GCP uh, account. So you will have a VPN. This VPN will help us to uh, to connect to the on-premise cluster. Now, whenever you want to move our data from GCP, uh, from on-premise to GCP, you can use this path where there will be a VPN gateway. <clears throat> then uh, we'll have a cloud VPN gateway and there would be a data pro cluster where your job will be getting executed, which will take the data from on-premise and move it to the Google Cloud Storage. Now, once the data is in the Google Cloud Storage, it's up to us. Like if you want to use an ephemeral cluster, we can use the ephemeral cluster. This cluster will read the data from uh, storage. It may be a GC, GCS, it may be a big query, it may be a big table. We can read from here, we can process the data and we can write back to these storage services like GCP, uh, cloud storage or BigQuery or uh, Bigtable. So this is how hybrid solution looks like. If I want to have everything on cloud, we can have a cloud native solution. Here there are two ways again, if you want to have ephemeral jobs, you can have an ephemeral cluster. If you want to have a persistent cluster, you can also maintain a per persistent cluster. You can maintain both as well. So it may be case, it may be a case where we want to have a persistent cluster for some use case, but in uh, we also want to have ephemeral cluster for uh, <clears throat> for our other use cases. So how it works uh, in case of uh, uh, an ephemeral cluster or a on-premise cluster, we will have a, some scheduler like Apache Airflow. There is a Google Cloud Composer, which is uh, which is basically uh, used. So Google Cloud Composer has a Apache Airflow running uh, in at the backend. So you can schedule your job. Uh, this uh, Apache Airflow or Google Cloud Composer will uh, trigger your uh, job in the ephemeral cluster. When your job, once your job is completed, it will uh, move the data from one location to other, or it may have some data processing logic in place. Once that is done, uh, your cluster will get shut down. Also, if you want to monitor, you can use stack driver or logging uh, services in, that is available in GCP uh, to see what happened to your job. Uh, you have all the logs will be present in these two services. And in case of an on, 
on on in case of the persistent cluster your cluster will keep on running forever unless you want to uh, like shut down after some time say after days or weeks or months you can shut it down and then create a new cluster for that uh, to connect to this cluster you will have an edge node uh, you will uh, which will help you to connect to the data prop cluster uh, all the analytics you can do on both on the uh, on premise uh, like on a persistent data prop cluster as well as on the uh, services like bigquery or other services so your data science work uh, use case it can run on data prop uh, which will expect that data is available on uh, gcs or it can be sdfs as well so let's say i have a uh, i want to do some analytics on uh, using data prop i can have a uh, on uh, like instead of an uh, ephemeral cluster i can have a persistent cluster uh, lifetime of this persistent cluster can be defined like say uh, if there is one of hour of inactivity i want to shut this cluster down given that i don't have any data stored here i am just using the compute from the data prop so these are the different use cases we'll discuss in detail uh, when uh, we'll have a lab session so this is how uh, hadoop works on the uh, gcp uh, so you can have a, data, a hybrid solution you can have a cloud native solution you can have data in your uh, uh, SDFS provided by data broker, you can have the data in the uh, Google Cloud Storage or BigQuery. So this is all we have uh, for the Hadoop on Google Cloud Platform. Thank you.